Why on earth are the markets going up right now? What is going on? Why are we seeing the S&P 500 go up, the cryptocurrency market go up, the sentiment around crypto moving out of extreme fear? What is going on? That's exactly what we're going to go through right now. And of course, we're going to go over all of the updates that you need to know to be fully up to date here in the world of crypto. If you like that sort of thing, I would really appreciate it if you smash that like button and smash the subscribe button if you are new here. And please do remember that nothing in this video is financial advice. And as we can see, here on the crypto bubbles we can see that overall the market is green once again with the outliers crv rune apecoin btg s and snx and matic all leading the way for this market but what is going on we're seeing the s p 500 again up today close to one percent of course bitcoin isn't really up today but we are still teetering on that twenty three thousand dollar mark which is definitely a breakout of where we have been trading sideways for over the last month and a half here and and on top of that, we are seeing the crypto greed and fear index creep into the 33 to 34 range when we have been just last month down all the way as low as 11. So why is this happening? The market is getting maybe a breath of fresh air. So first of all, we have the US inflation of 9.1. I know you guys know this already, but what it seems like is the market thinks that this is the peak of inflation. 9.1 was the peak. Next month, we're going to get the same or less, which means inflation's peaked, which means fear, uncertainty, doubt may have also peaked. So it could have been a great time to be investing into things you believed in over the last few weeks. But people are now piling in because that's kind of being validated by the overall sentiment. What we want to do here on the channel is we don't want to follow the crowds, right? We want to be investing dollar cost averaging when the market is super fearful, because that is the best opportunity, in my opinion. That's why I keep bringing you videos each and every day telling you guys that I'm dollar cost averaging. When Bitcoin was at its lows, when all of these cryptos were at its lows, I was still telling you long-term bullish, long-term outlook is the way forward. Second reason is it seems like, or the expected announcement will be the Fed to stick to the 75 basis point hike in July and the chance of an official recession sitting at around 40%. Now I think of course we are in a recession right now, but the official announcement hasn't come out yet with a 40% likelihood of, of it coming out. But mainly here is the 75 basis point hike. Now, two Two months ago, if you had said it was going to be a 75 basis point hike, the market would have dumped for sure. But of course, we've had this already. And again, if it's the same or lower, that is an idea that things are getting better or the worst has already happened. On top of that, we also have good earnings. So the Nasdaq has surged more than 1% in third straight positive season as Tesla shares pop. So the Nasdaq composite rose Thursday as Tesla shares surged on the back of better than expected earning results. Now we're going to potentially have more good earning results coming in or not necessarily good, but better than expected earning results. And all of this together with the fact that the DXY, the dollar currency index right now is having a pullback. As we can see, we've been on a raging bull market for at least a year now. And in history, when the DXY is in a bear trend, that's when Bitcoin has a bull market. When it's in a raging bull market for the DXY, Bitcoin goes into a bear market. So now that we're having all of this stuff that we've been through just now, plus the fact that this is on a little pullback, the market is getting excited. The market is planning for the worst to be behind us. And that is why the market is pumping right now. Hopefully that brings you up to speed. Just before jumping further into this video, I want to introduce you guys to today's channel sponsor, and that is Virus finance, the liquidity protocol for lending and borrowing assets. Now, over the last few months, we've had a completely crazy time when it comes to DeFi. We've seen some of the biggest projects and platforms during this time go through some intense turbulence, some crashing, some going to zero, and Virus Finance and Waves, the parent blockchain, are no exception to this turbulence. Now, one thing that stands out about Virus Finance is they set out a game plan to restore everything, to come back from the ashes, and that's exactly what they've done. So we're going to go through quickly what they offer currently. 40% for staking stable coins like USDT, USC and USDN and 130% for their native token staking. Now with that said, we know that most other platforms are not offering anything like this anymore with Aave offering around 10%, Nebula 6%, Coinbase 1.6% and Binance 10%. So the difference is obvious here. So Virus Finance is a passive income opportunity here in this bear market. If you are someone who prefers staking and generating an income over actively trading in the 
the market. But of course, this is DeFi and it can be seriously risky. So before you do anything, head down to my description where you'll find all of the links that you need to start your research into this project. And remember, as we've learned over the last few months, never invest any money you're not completely okay with losing. With that said, let's jump straight back into this video. Let's have a look at the Wall Street cheat sheet. Look guys, we got to decide where we think we are. In my mind, I think Euphoria was actually the first peak. Euphoria was actually here. So this might not be exactly what happened, but it would be interesting to consider that maybe this was simply a dead cat bounce that happened to go higher than the last peak. So as we see here, we bounced really high and we reached this peak just slightly higher here. And we can check out on the chart. That may very well be the complacency. We just need to call off for the next rally. And that is very much what we were hearing all of this time, right? We just need to call off for the next rally. Heading back to this, we can see anxiety, denial, panic, and capitulation. I think potentially this right here was the capitulation. We know that Tesla actually sold 75% of their Bitcoin holdings around the $28,000 mark, which happens to coincide directly with this sell-off. Of course, we had loads of other things happen, but that was one of the things that played into account. This potentially is capitulation, or this is simply still denial and panic. Then you can see here, the market cycle makes a low here, but we have one more here, the anger. Who shorted the market? Why did the government allow this to happen again? So the anger, it could be down here at around 17, could even be 14,000, maybe even lower. But this sort of thing may come in when we've got the Mt. Gox release of billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. Now, I don't think this is necessarily going to be as bad as what people expect, but the key here is what people expect. So when this date comes closer, there may very well be another massive sell-off just before that. But if we do get this anger moment, we can see we get a boring market for a while, depression, and then a disbelief. Now, there is, of course, arguments that right now we are in disbelief and this is the rally beginning. I don't so much think that. I do think there is going to be more downside, but that is overall how I'm looking at the market against this normal psychology of a market cycle. Let me know down there in the comment section how you guys are looking at this market and what do we have going forward? Will this market stay green? Well, first of all, we do have on July 26th and 27th, the FOMC meeting where we will find out about the rate hikes. If they're the, the same or better, I think that's going to be good for the market. If they're worse, I think that will be bad for the market. Heading over, we also have, like I said, on July 29th, the official word whether or not we're in a recession. And there is a good chance that on the morning of the 29th, the headline will read the US is now in recession. This headline alone could send the market down into that final capitulation event where the last of the people who were going to sell, sell, they panic out of the market and it could represent an absolutely great buying moment. On top of that, we did also, of course, have the Tesla selling their 75%, which I think is both a good and a bad thing. I think that the bad thing is that we had one of the biggest supporters of Bitcoin selling out. So that's not good for sentiment. The good side is it didn't affect the market too much. Now, we don't know if it's going to continue to affect the market going forward as more people hear about it, for example, but it didn't initially dump the market as much as it would have back in the day. As we know, Tesla and Elon Musk had massive sway over the market. So I think that's good. Now, there is another rumor going around that MicroStrategy is actually selling its Bitcoin. The third largest wallet has transferred 29,000 Bitcoin to exchange platforms and people are speculating that this is MicroStrategy's Bitcoin address. No one actually knows if this is true or not, but of course that wouldn't be good for the market at all if that was the case. I tend to think that he wouldn't sell, but that's because I guess I see the good in people. Maybe he has been tricking us all along. We will just have to wait to find out if this is true or not. Now, lastly, just to go over some quick news before we wrap this video up, the former Coinbase manager has been arrested for his alleged role in insider trading. So one of the biggest exchanges, manager, insider trading, not good for the market at all. We have South Korean prosecutors raid crypto exchanges amid the lunar probe. So as you know, South Korea has joined up recently with America to go and look into what happened with Terra Luna. Hopefully we get some more ideas here. We also now have more news that blockchain.com announces 25% staff layoffs following the three arrows capital fallout, another platform affected by these huge liquidations. But remember, these are all connected to three arrows capital. The worst may very well be behind us. Lastly, we do have three coins that are having a lot of whale activity, which is exciting, right? This is exciting. Dogecoin, Polygon Matic and Uniswap may very well be coins that you guys want to go out and research right now because there may be amazing opportunities in the market for you guys. With that said, I hope I provided you with some value and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.